lot of people come in. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about setting up the uh, new React router stuff and how it will interact with uh, React components and uh, look at a little of the refactoring that happened on um, the app we've been playing with a little bit. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we'll actually go backwards quickly. We'll, we'll sandwich it. Look at the refactor, do the routing, talk about it a little bit more. Um, so um, before I start sharing and talking and typing, um, any overall questions or anything you'd like me to concentrate on uh, or anything that is confusing so far? I think I think we're wondering if we should try to focus on like version five or version six, like switch versus browser router. Yeah, I would I would say, you know, as long as you're learning it, you may as well learn the current one. Um, okay. It's it's not philosophically different, really. Um, it's the same principles. Uh, if you wind up getting a job somewhere that uses V5 the transition will be pretty, pretty easy. Um, okay. Yeah, they just make a few, the changes in V6, uh, they make a few things more explicit that were kind of implied, I think, in the older versions, um, just because of like legacy stuff. And uh, they made one or two changes that are like super, super helpful um, that avoid a lot of problems that, common problems that come up all the time, so. Um, I'm not sure if I like V6 better, but I don't have a problem with it. So um, cool. if you do have questions specifically about V5, I'm happy to talk about that because uh, there's some tricky bits. But yeah, let's, let's go with V6 now. And uh, I'm happy to talk about other versions or how to you know, migrate if you've already done V5. Um, yeah. Other questions before we start? Good, cool. Um, let me get all the pieces in place here. Chat over there. Share your screen. Hi, meeting controls. Command, shift, control. Control, command, shift, H. Nope, did not work. Okay. <laughs> command, control, option, H. Nope, still didn't work. All right. Do it myself. Cool. So um, here's what we have, a big old black screen. Mm, right, so this is what we've been working on. Uh, I have it running here. Oh, look, it's a little bit prettier than it was before. Um, I threw some skeleton styling on there. Uh, skeleton is my favorite little uh, go-to CSS framework. It's like 100 lines, uh, super small CDN, flexible. You can build on it from there um, if you don't want to do bootstrap or material or uh, semantic. This is the one I tend to work from as a starter. It's got like simple, let me let me demonstrate for you. Um, not demonstrate, uh, show you some docs. Um, you just like include it in your CSS. It's got a real simple grid. Um, it's got basic typo typography uh, and styling for stuff that makes things look nice automatically. Um, I just plop in uh, it's probably not what you came for, but this is what you're getting. Um, <laughs> in my index HTML, um, you can just plop in a link to their CDN, um, and it puts that in, and like automatically, it just like makes your shit look good. Um, uh, the only thing I really changed was instead of my straight up um, Janko uh, things here, uh, I put everything in. Uh, I just made sure like it wasn't just text, it was a label uh, and it styles everything super nice for me. So um, if you want things to look pretty without doing any work, just basic, get skeleton. And this is not sponsored. I just like it. <laughs> Would you um, use skeleton for like uh, a normal project or is this yeah. just, okay. Yeah, uh, you, usually when I start on, unless like I have specific requirements that I'm like, this is a perfect thing for materialize or whatever. Um, my, all my projects, my personal projects anyway, start off as like sketches to like, even see like, do I want to do this at all in the first place? Um, so it's usually just like 
looks like this basically and i just throw a skeleton on top everything looks kind of pretty to start off with um and then you can either override their styles with your own css you can go in and edit them uh you can you know throw another library on top if you want uh it's it's super light just gives you basic stuff um and i've built things that look uh totally decent on top of it like um oh should i show something let me see um i wonder if i have that one is that public there's one that's uh <laughs> this is not again not what you came for but here we no, are i'm i'm interested because I, <laughs> I was looking at the skeleton but i was wondering if it was too minimalist for the other two yeah it is it is very minimalist um but that means that you can alter it pretty easily to do what you want um oh, there's something i did a while back that builds on it that like doesn't look like it at all. Let's see. Um, oh boy, what was it? Um, not Minuet. I mean, this thing did, but that's pretty minimal too. Was it? It was the uh, oh, it was the uh, spaceship game. The um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> it looks really cool. Trust me. Um, God, what did I call it? it Station Omega. I don't think it is. I think it's a different one. No, no, super no. I'll find it. You can just ah, Typhon. That's what it is. Um, can I see that? Um, being hosted. Is it hosted anywhere? Settings, pages. Oh, I moved everything around again. Um, nope, it's not being hosted. Okay. Well, uh, I, oh, maybe. Sorry, this is a super, super tangent, but I'm excited about this. Like, so I can show you like what it looks like from that. Um, do I have it in my repo? If I don't have it here. I'll, I'll find it later. Oh, there it is. Um, so this is just a straight up, um, yeah. Uh, straight up create react project with skeleton and then I customized the shit out of um, it and it looks like this. Mm. Nope, I didn't install. Yeah, yeah, it's... It might break because the back end is not up and it's not down and I'm like and it's back end might be running somewhere else. Um, but yeah, this is a the the beginning of a little like uh, science fiction style Red Dragon in type game. Um, if you know what that is, uh, it's I I looked at what's the current uh, Dragon Tavern or something. It is um, Jesus Christ, um, and just like made that science fiction. Uh, but didn't actually write the game, just did the like UI and registration stuff for it. Blue, blue, blue. Man, and I clearly haven't worked on it in a while because this is all old versions. But the code is really good. <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy with the way this came out. Uh, and the back end is all Node Express if it's uh, that is something that you're interested in. Anyway, <laughs> if this doesn't work after this, I'm going to, we'll, we'll talk about it later. Um, anyway, yeah, and like the, if you want to look at the, while we're here, the um, get skeleton, get skeleton, get skeleton. The actual CSS of it is, like really easy to read. Uh, it for me, where is it? Step two to four. Um, here's our CSS. Uh, let me open that in. Um, like it's super well laid out. Um, and like the CSS is like there's what? 400 some odd lines of it. A lot of it is comments, um, but it's like pretty straightforward. It's just like, puts a lot of basic prettiness on it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's good. 
Yeah, and then you can either go in and edit this yourself, or what I like to do is override it because uh, cascading still running. Well, one of these times that'll that'll pop up when it's done. Um, in the meantime, back to the matter at hand. Um, let me talk a little bit about what I did uh, to make it look like uh, this. Um, aside from just putting sail on it. Uh, otherwise, it's exactly the same as it was before, um, except, uh, so a couple things I did. Uh, like I talked about doing a whole bunch, I broke it out into three different uh, components, which is going to come in handy when we pick up routing. Um, let's just look at the register component. Um, forms have labels instead of just text hanging out there. Um, but this all is a lot cleaner uh, because I added a couple of custom hooks that you can see up top here. Um, so a custom hook is literally just a JavaScript file um, that you export a function from, and it just has to start with the word use. So um, you can see here that uh, the register call, this is just gonna be a function. Um, and I'm saying, hey, use my custom hook. This hook is gonna hit the users. It's gonna call this callback uh, when it's done, and it's gonna be a post. And then in the library, um, all this is saying, well, this is just <laughs> error checking. Um, it's saying return this function. Uh, by default, the data is empty. Um, I'm saying if it happens to be an event or we're doing a get, don't put the data in because we don't like that. Um, and then just returning a function that does this fetch with the API defined up here. And I decided to put the API just in here because it's the only API I'm using for this project. Um, you could write a different hook that took an API. I didn't feel like that was necessary here. Um, hits the route with the method, puts all the standard headers. Um, and since we are storing the token in local storage, we can just grab the token from here if it is there. Um, if it's not, this is going to be empty. Uh, if there's data, it's going to stringify it. And then it's going to do the fetch. And when it comes back, it's going to call the method that you pass into it. Um, so I use that in all three of them. There's the register API, there's the get profile API, and this one's doing a get, so I'm not giving it a method, and the login one. Uh, and so I don't have to write that big old um, fetch in every component. That would be just duplicating code. Um, and I don't have to like do all the gross header stuff every time. Super, super nice and clean. Uh, and once it works, I never have to look at it again. I can just be like, Hey, look it up, and then when you want to use it, use it, and um, send that data along. So that's a nice uh, read back to there in React. So would you recommend just kind of setting this up as default when creating a large project? Yeah, um, and like my my development process kind of mirrors what we have been doing. Um, I totally like rule one it, like make it gross and make it work. And then it, it depends on like what my sort of cadence is. Um, do I, do I set this up initially? Probably not. I'm probably going to just get my fetch and stuff working. Once I get it working, then I'll extract it into the library. Um, after one call, after two calls, probably as soon as I do two in a real project. Um, but yeah, it's definitely like. Although there are better or best practices, um, the way I usually code is just kind of like throw stuff at the wall and then refine it afterwards. Um, I have, and I haven't updated it in years, like a standard project template GitHub repo. And it's like, here's my Express backend, here's my React front end. Um, and here's some like useful stuff I always put in. Um, but I haven't updated it in a while. so. I haven't used it in a while, but yeah, if you're like cranking out a new project every month, um, putting all your stuff in a template repo is probably a great way to do it. Um, or, you know, just having these sitting around, you can also like, if you're feeling sparky, you can write that, um, you know, generalize this so that you actually do put in the API. So it's not baked in, um, and then make a little NPM module out of it, whether you're just you use it or 
other people decide to use it, it's there. And then when you want to use it, you say like, npm install my fetch API finger. Uh, and then you can use it like any other module. Uh, it's super, super nice to do, super fun. Uh, and then you don't have to worry about it sitting <laughs> like if you get kicked off a of GitHub or your machine explodes or whatever, like it's always available in NPM forever. Um, yeah, so short answer, eh, I don't know. Uh, I we could we could just steal what you have here and use that. You could though. absolutely just steal <laughs> this, change the API, and then use that. Um, absolutely, yeah. There's no reason not to. <laughs> um, I I think like. And this isn't like the standard one way to do it. Like I just literally wrote this this morning. Um, and I, I feel like every time I do this, it's like slightly different, um, either because of mood or whatever. Um, so unless, you know, if you do take the time to make it a module, then great. Um, if you just copy paste it, that's fine. If you rewrite it every time, <laughs> it's no problem because it takes, it takes, uh, you know, once you do it a few times, it takes like 15 minutes. Um, yeah, so you work whichever way. You are there, are there other tasks that you would recommend moving into a, into a hook? Cause I, I have never created a hook. Just yeah. use Why, yes, the default. Is. Boop. Um, so, uh, I didn't hook up Redux for this because it seemed like overkill. Um, what I did was pull my state my user state out into a, uh, a hook. So uh, for register, for example, um, I'm bringing in my user state hook and saying, cool, it's returning uh, the user a way to update the state from a form and reset it. Uh, and so in my user state, it also returns the set user at the end, but I'm not grabbing that. Um, so I just pulled this out into a hook so I don't have all of this code sitting at the top of each module that I'm using it in. And literally all it does is it sets up the state in there. Um, this is the uh, method I attach to my event listeners. So in all of these, the one thing I did add was an, uh, a name for these. So now I can say, so like when uh, on change for the username, um, it calls this. And so it's going to say, hey, the key is the name of the form field. The value is what's in the form field. And then I just update the user object with that key and value. Um, and I have to put square brackets around key or else it's just going to use the word key as value. And that's not what I want. Um, and now I you know, export this from my hook and then I just use it in all of my forms everywhere. Not that one, this one here. Um, yeah, update user state. So um, yeah, and then like in every in two of them, I think I'm you know resetting it. Um, I didn't include that. Um, reset user just says, "Hey, set the user back to the empty user." I don't know why I have that in there. Reset user is just a function. Um, yeah, so and anything that anything that you're doing more than once um, is worth pulling out. I feel like anything that's going to like, because that's, you know, half on this terminal, half a page of code, right? So if I can take a half a page of code out from two or three different components, why not? Um, it doesn't cost anything except for like, I, I think there's, I think there's a, there can be a, when you're first learning at least, a mystique around custom hooks um, and uh, they do fancy things and whatever. It's like, it's literally just pulling the code you would write out of your function um, and putting it in there. And, you know, you can do, you can do fetches. Um, you know, sometimes I ha I've had hooks that do uh, all sorts of stuff. Um, it, it's just JavaScript code. So you can make it do whatever you want. The, the main thing so you can put, you can make a custom hook or you can like write just a regular JavaScript library file that you just import, right? The times when I would make it a hook is when, um, I don't, I, so this one didn't need to be a hook, right? Cause I'm not actually using any React stuff. This one 
I'm using set state. So that needs to be a hook. Um, that could have just been a, a library that was like, hey, here's a function. Um, could you talk a little bit more about that, the library thing? Um, we had like a big ass array that we were going to use, but it was taking up like, I mean, it would have taken up like 500 lines of, uh, of a page. So I was thinking, oh yeah, yeah we can turn it into an external file and import it, but yeah, uh, we ended up not doing that, but it was something that I uh, was thinking about and wasn't exactly sure how to do. Yeah, so um, let me show you another little thing I threw together um, that does exactly that, I believe. I, I, it's, it's, oh, I can set status on there. That's new or new to me, or I never noticed it. Um, so this is, uh, <laughs> if you play Wordle, I put together a thing that takes your Wordle score and makes a, uh, a map out of it. So that's what I do. Um, uh, it is on hexel.me if you want to see. goes in there, you paste your thing in there um, and it makes the map. So uh, what I did was um, in here, I think it is. Uh, so I have pulled out a couple of functions uh, and this is a React project. Uh, so I have I made like a use random, which because of the way the map is generated, I can't just use math random. So I made my own little uh, random generator that could be seeded. Um, so you'll get consistent but random results every time. I put that in a hook. Um, the uh, generator code, I put in a hook. Um, and again, this could probably just be, no, use a state. Um, so that needs to be a hook. But uh, I think the encoder, so that's encoding and decoding stuff. Um, but this is the one, yeah. So um, because of the way Wordle works, uh, basically just takes the date, takes an offset. And then in the JavaScript in Wordle, it has an array that you can just look at and see what the words for the days are. Um, so I grabbed that whole array. It's big. Um, it's so big. It's so big. Um, because when I, oh, come back. Um, you know, when I generate the map, I give it a title and that's based on the wordle of the day that they put into the, um, thing. So if you see, I uh, said the land of drink, that means, uh, number 206, uh, the word you guessed was drink. Um, so I just put that in and this is just, a. this could, so this doesn't use use state or anything. This could just be a library file. It doesn't need to be a hook. Um, it is in fact technically not a custom hook because it doesn't use any React stuff. Um, it's just a library that's named the same uh, as a hook would be named. Um, but I could just call it like Wordle words or whatever. So yeah, you can put anything in and then you just export it. Um, I exported this as a function uh, because I'm grabbing a random thing out of there. I don't need to expose the list. But if you wanted to just expose your list, you could just export that and then import word list from that file. Um, so yeah, it's libraries uh, and, or modules and uh, custom hooks. They're just JavaScript. So you can export whatever you want from them. You could export a function, you could export a class, you can export a giant list or object of stuff. You could export the number three if you want to, for some reason, um, there's no, no constraints on that. Um, so we ended up putting that long ass list into the back end and just fetching it mm, yeah. um yeah. would like which which one is better <laughs> keeping it and uh, like in the library and and exporting it or putting it in the back end and, and fetching it yeah so um so uh, i don't know if you're familiar with world it's a word guessing game da, 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 every day yes. word um this this array is just sitting in their JavaScript code and it's it's React 2. Um, which means that if this was some kind of competitive game or something, client is in the hands of the enemy. So you can just look at the source code and see that list. Um, if they wanted it to be slightly more quote unquote secure, um, it would be an API call where you'd say, hey, get me the word of the day from this API. 
the list lives on the back end and it only sends back the one word um that lets you send one alert one word instead of 500 or however many there are um which saves you on bandwidth um but also keeps your data it, it only exposes the data that you need to expose um but if you wanted to get the whole list from the back end there's no reason not to um it's I mean slightly less load on your server if you just send it along with the javascript um but not enough to really make a difference i think that's more of a that's more of an aesthetic choice where you decide to put that um i if it is just for speed purposes i think i would prefer putting those on the front end um because if there's a bunch of different places you're going to be using it uh or if you're going to be using it over and over again um it makes sense just to like have that available in memory but you know if you know it's only a, a call to a server which is you know half a second or whatever so if speed is not if that ux is not an issue for you then it really doesn't matter uh, i would say that the the case where it's definitely you want to put on the back end is where you don't want to expose the entire data set all at once that makes sense cool thank you um, yeah, I'm glad I have all these things like these stupid little projects I did <laughs> to show off things. Um, did this one ever come up? No, because it's broken. Oh well, uh, I'll, I'll leave that open and I'll I'll host it somewhere and show y'all because it looks really cool. I did a really good job with the CSS. Took a long time. Um, so um, yeah, so here's one of the refactorings, pulling stuff out into libraries slash custom hooks. Um, yeah, that's fetch API, not technically a custom hook, but it follows the same convention, so it may as well be. Um, and that cleans up our code considerably. So like, here's the get profile stuff, and like we're literally just getting doing that call. And since again, we're not. Um, you know, this is just a get, uh, so we don't have to put that whole authorization header and stuff in there by hand for every get call. That's just taken care of automatically. Um, and also that way you won't forget to do it, um, which helps me a lot because my brain. Uh, but really like this is, like, that is the whole code. It's returning the HTML or XSL and like that is so much cleaner than it was before. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are the main refactors I did. Um, kind of aesthetic. I, I was going to do this, but I have, I'll talk about it briefly. Um, I did have a thing that, like, oh, if the, when you log in, it sets the JWT token in your local storage. And then here it has a conditional, if there's a token, uh, show a logout button. Otherwise, show the login button. Um, and I can fix this with a, throwing in a login state. But when you just change local storage, uh, React doesn't re-render until state changes. So it doesn't care. So um, I would have to add a logged in state to that. So in, if, if you change something like local storage and expect React to re-render, it won't. Uh, because React only re-renders when state changes. Um, cool. And just to uh, verify that this works still, uh, let's see. Uh, ee, ee, ee. Yeah, cool. Register. Uh, registered object. Great. That's our stuff. Um, these are because those forms are on the same page and they should not be, so they will not be soon. Um, can I get the profile now? No, I can't because I'm not logged in. Uh, ee, ee. Log in there. Great, logged in. There's our token. Get profile. Amazing. Now we get the stuff. Uh, reset that. It goes away. If I log out, great. Get the profile. Can't get it. Super. Um, and clearly, what, no. what does your logout function look like? Is it just it's clear? It's just clearing out the logged yeah. in object. Yeah, it just sets the um, token to an empty string. Just, okay, to an empty string. 
because right. We're, our quick and dirty way of doing logout was just forcing a reload of the page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, and that's yeah, that's what I would do given five more minutes working on this. Uh, just put a logged in state. Um, yeah, but since we're going to add routes, they're not really going to see that here. So sneaky, sneaky. Um, cool. So those are all my refactors. Uh, everything works. So now, um, half an hour in, let's talk about routes. <laughs> Any other questions or comments, thoughts about any of the stuff we've seen so far? Awesome. Um, I know that there's like a two hour lecture on routes somewhere, um, but there is really only 15 minutes. So I'll save you some time. Um, cool. So let's talk about what we wanted to do. Right now, everything's on the same page. Uh, I would like this to be my first page, uh, this to be the page that you see after that, then that. Uh, so I want these to be at um, different places and maybe have a home page that's like, click here to create a new user, click here to log in, uh, and then take those to the appropriate pages. So we're going to need four routes. Uh, sorry to oh, jump in again. If we say you wanted to, um, when the user lands on the app, it should show the create new user or the login or something, or maybe you have both of those on one thing and they can switch between which one they want to do. How would you use uh, an existing component as your home page? Yeah, so uh, that's just another route. Home page is just another route, um, which we don't have right now. So uh, maybe I should make one of those too. Um, is that what, like what you're asking there? Or you can right. have, or you can have a point to an existing one if you don't want the home page. So you would just set it up so like home page would go to slash login. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let, let's see what that looks like, and maybe that'll make it more clear. Um, so let me make a quick home page route here. Uh, or it's our a file. Um, home JS and home just gonna. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, right now, let's just uh, have that be the thing. Get. Great, good, good, good. Home, great, we're home. Sweet. So let's talk a little bit about routes. Um, React Router uh, DOM specifically is the library we're going to use. Uh, so we need to install it. And if I just say install normal, it should give us the latest version. Um, if it doesn't, we can force it to do that. So we do npm, nope, <laughs> npm, npm. Install React Router DOM. Boom. Uh, oh, let me do at six. So we're going to install version six specifically. Should do it by default. I just want to make sure. Yep. Cool. Um, sweet. So now I have React Router DOM. Um, I think I am going to. So talk about higher level. Basically what router gives you is a, uh, a router, uh, which basically says everything inside, router is just a component, it says everything inside this component uh, is going to have the uh, ability to switch out what is showing depending on what route you're seeing in the uh, location bar. Um, there's two different ways to do it. There's browser router, which just looks at your URL. Um, and there's hash router, which sometimes you have to use depending on how your hosting is set up. Um, but they operate the same under the hood. It's just how they see the URL differently. Um, usually, you can default to browser router. And if it doesn't work for some reason, you can always just change it to hash router. And it's fine. So. Um, I think what I'm going to do just to make it a little bit cleaner is I'm going to bring it in here. Um, so I need to import a bunch of things. Um, I need to import the br 
browser router. Um, don't do anything else here. You forgot an S on browser. Browser router. Um, I think I just want the browser router in here and I'll put the other routes inside app. Maybe, we'll see. Uh, Browser down, great. Bloop. Um, and then I'm just gonna wrap, uh, wrap up here in. So everything inside that app component is gonna have access to uh, be able to use routes. Um, do I work to put routes out here too? I'm gonna try. I don't think that's, well, no, it's not, okay, great. Um, forgive my muttering. Um, cool, so in here, we're gonna need to import some stuff as well. Uh, we're gonna need to import, uh, um, we're going to import the uh, routes component. Uh, and that's basically the switch um, that says, we're putting stuff inside here that we're checking out. Um, we're going to need the route component itself. Um, I think that's a good start for now. Um, cool. So you can put the routes wherever you want. Basically, anything inside that uh, is going to get switched out depending on what the location is. Uh, most usually, it's sort of done as a uh, full page thing. Um, I will often use it where I have like, uh, a nav or a header up top that never changes. And then inside there is where I do the routing. And so those components flip out and a footer then that doesn't change. Uh, but you can wrap the whole thing uh, if you want to. It really depends. You, know, you can wrap just like one little div somewhere if you want to, um, just depends on what you want to do. We're going to do the whole page-ish kind of thing. Um, we'll see what that looks like. Uh, but if I wanted to put a nav up top and not route around it, I could. Uh, in fact, let me do that right now. Uh, nav. Um, here's my sweet navigation. Um, cool. So that's not going to change. That's going to stay at the top of everyone. Um, yeah, yeah. Like you can literally just like route like, oh, here's your little message box or whatever. Um, very few cases for doing that, but yeah, it's literally just another component, uh, super flexible. Uh, just to make it big. Cool. Uh, so that's not going to change. That's that's not going. Come on, buddy. What are we doing? That's not going to change. Uh, so uh, underneath the router, uh, underneath the navigation, is we're going to put our uh, routes. So we can just do routes. Um, and everything in there is going to get switched out depending on uh, what our location is. So um, let me do a, a couple of routes here. So I'll do a uh, route and the syntax is a little bit different into um, path. Um, I, so the one major thing that's different, or not one, one of the major things that's different is that in v5 and before, uh, the routes are evaluated in order. And so if it matches something like slash at the top, it's going to go to slash. So the most common problem I see is people do a, a slash route up top. Um, and then they're like, cool, now I'm going to do a route for you know login or whatever. Um, and then that second one never, ever, ever gets hit because it matches on the first one first, and then it does that. Uh, V6 said goodbye to all that. So um, you could do a match exact in V5, but now it just like does what a human thinks it should do. Um, so if you have them in whatever order, it doesn't matter. It's going to match the best match uh, or the most... Uh, What's the phrase? The most precise match, I guess. Um, short version, it does pretty much what you think it's going to do. Um, exact, yeah, kind of, because it's not exact, because it still will do, 
like if you did these two and then went to like slash blah, uh, it would fall back to this um, because that's the thing that matches slash blah the best. Uh, it just does it in a reasonable way, I guess. There's probably a better word for it. Um, so another major difference is the way that you um, specify where it's going uh, before you would just give the name of the component. Um, here you have to actually say, uh, it's gonna be element. Uh, and then in there, you're gonna have some React and it says, okay, this is what's getting rendered out. So uh, I'm gonna render out home for a default one. Um, and that's it. So let's just do uh, element equals login. Uh, and so this way, if you need to like pass in props or have like, you can put a chunk of stuff in there if you want to, um, I wouldn't, but uh, basically that makes it more flexible so that any, any JSX in here is what's gonna get rendered out for that path. Um, and that's really like, the best way to think about it. This is basically a switch that says, if your location matches one of these things, render out this JSX here. Uh, I'm gonna do the other two here. I'm just gonna do uh, register. Um, so now when I go to those, oh, is that just going to work? I don't know. Let's find out. So our home should be, Hey, here's my, oh, I can take that off the home, 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 home. There we go. Um, great. So now it's showing us our home because we're at the root here. Um, if I do register, it should navigate to register and still has my sweet navigation bar. I have to go to login. I'm going to log in form. I have to go to profile. It will say get the profile, which we can because we're not logged in. Cool. Um, so that is navigating by bits and pieces there by the location. Um, we can see. Oh, and this lets you use the back and forth. So even though you're literally on like the JSX page is not reloading. Um, it looks like you're navigating to different pages, which is super cool. Um, and also lets you give someone a, um, uh, a URL, like the um, uh, the Hexel thing I did, right? Uh, bloop, give me nothing. Um, it generates a unique URL for that thing. Uh, this is using router and saying, hey, grab this. Uh, and then it's going to pass it as a param. So if I open up a incognito window and pass that in, it's using router to grab this big encoded thing and make a thing out of it. So basically, using router means that you can give someone, "Hey, here's a uh, you know profile, uh, you know user two or whatever." You can send someone this URL, um, and it will go to where you want. So. Um, that's just displaying the routes. Um, there are, V6 gives you some shortcuts and uh, little tweaks uh, that I really haven't played with yet. Um, I think you can like substitute index for slash. Um, and uh, I think nesting is a little bit easier slash different. Um, you probably won't need to use that that much, uh, but their docs are exceptional. So um, that's how you set up basic routes. Um, the other thing you can do is, uh, Zach, yeah, um, is navigate to a route from your place. So let me actually change the navigation bar. Let's do that uh, for starters. So um, let's, I'm not gonna let's take that H1 off because it's bugging me. Uh, navigation bar is going to have a bunch of links. So it's going to have home, uh, it's going to have register, it's going to have, boop, 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 boop. Uh, it's going to have login, it's going to have, so uh, those links will show up on here. Great. Uh, let me just put a 
Mav, Mav, Mav. Um, water bottom bucket. Solid. And it's going to have a margin. Uh, Cool, better. Um, let's make it a little bit bigger. That's not this. One point five. That's great. Cool. Um, so these are just words right now, and they show up on all of our pages. Um, oh, the other another cool thing about skeleton it does the cool like middle kind of container thing. It's literally just putting like auto marches on the side, but it's so nice by default. Um, cool. So we have our header bar here. Um, and, you know, I could put this in a, um, a component. I might do it in a minute. Um, but we want these to go to the right places. How do we do that? Um, there's another thing you can export from a router, and that is link. Like that. Um, and all this does, this is just another component. Um, it creates a um, link to the right place. Um, so if you just say uh, link to slash, um, do I need to put anything else in there? Um, I think that's it, yeah. Uh, we put all the other ones in there. Boop, boop, boop. Ugh, why? Sometimes auto close is nice, sometimes. Let's go. I know, I know. Uh, so cool, this is going to go to your register. There's going to go login, and it's going to go to profile. So buddies here. Hey, they're all links now. I can Home, register, login, and profile. What do you know about that? Um, not logged in. Uh, and you know, of course, I can put this in its own uh, its own thing. Uh, I'm going to say uh, call it call it nav top nav. Loop. Um, I would need to import, oh, it's gross, uh, import all of our stuff from there. So I'll bring link out of here and put, uh, actually, I think I can do how to get to that. Yeah, 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 I'll include. Um, and then I just throw a link in here, or top nav in here. Blam. Uh, just that easy. Cool. Make sure we get some better spacing in there. Does that work? No. We could do that a little. There we go. Um, cool. So now those work from its own place. Um, and now we can just log in. Um, home, register. Uh, FF, FF, do, 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 do. FF, register. Yay, we registered. Um, aha, aha. Uh, we can go to log in. Log in. FFF, FFF. Logged in. Great. I go to profile. I get the profile. Hey, there's the profile. Cool. Um, awesome. Is there a logout button? Log out. Get the profile, fantastic. Um, so links, super easy. Um, one more thing. Uh, one more thing. So say uh, we have our homepage. Um, put this in div. Uh, say, uh, welcome to my page register. Log in above. Um, sweet. So um, that's done forever. 
Um, so now I think about user flow, right? Um, I go to register when I create a new user. If it works, I want to go straight to login. And if I log in, I want to go straight to profile. Um, if I log out, I probably want to go straight back home. Um, there's a way to do that. The way to do that is uh, let's do it on register first. So um, after the uh, register API there, uh, registered. So when registered comes back successfully, um, I want it to navigate to the login page so they can log in. Um, could just go to profile since we have the token, but we're not going to work it that way. Um, cool. So I just wanted to uh, navigate, navigate, navigate to um, uh, slash uh, login, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's all I want to do. Um, yeah, where's that navigate coming from? Mm. Navigate comes from, I guessed it, backdrop DOM, navigate, Lambo. Um, cool. So let's see. NERP, navigate was not found. It's a hook. It's a hook. Um, use navigate. <laughs> uh, so that just means I need to set up the function. It's, I think it's just like that. Um, so this is a hook. This is a custom hook that React Router DOM gives us. Um, the hook just returns a function that we can use to navigate. Um, navigate. Goes to login, much better. Right, so we're on F, G, 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 da, 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 da. G, G, G. Uh, and so now if everything works, it should go straight to login after I register. Oh, it worked, great. Um, and now let's pick up the same thing on the login, right? Mm, login, I'm gonna import. No, let's see if I can get it to work automatically. Yes. Um, cool. And then when it's logged in, uh, once the storage is set, I just want to navigate to. Um, and submit login on logged in. Uh, where's my log out button? There it is. Uh, this on click is going to be a. That's going to be its whole thing. I should pull it out, but I'm not going to do it right now. Let's nav navigate to home. Uh, cool. A little gross, but we'll live with it. Um, cool. So now I'll log in. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. So logging in should take us to our profile page where we can get the profile. Great. Um, on a real page, I'll just have that load. Uh, well, let's make it a real page. Um, profile, profile, profile. Um, I'm gonna have it do it automatically. I'm gonna do a um, use effect. And um, that's going to do a thing. And what it's gonna do is um, it's just gonna do on profile, I think. Nope, what's it gonna do? It's gonna do um, get profile. Yeah, I'm not passing any data, right? Not passing any data. Get profile. Um, I'll just do that. I'll do those. Give it my empties. Um, yeah. Um, what is this? Yeah, right. Um, yeah, hooks. This is a thing I love to do. Uh, disable. Cool. No more squiggly. Um, 
because Git profiles are going to change. Um, sweet. So now the profile page should just, um, when I log in, give me a profile by default. Great. Uh, I can reset it for no reason. I can get it again. Um, and, um, you know, I can do, I can put a logout button here and that should take us back to home. Bloop. Um, I can put the same logout button anywhere else I want. Now, if I go to profile, there's no profile because it's logged out. If, if you wanted to hide your login button after somebody's already logged in or your, your register and log in, you just wrap those in a ternary in your yep. nav bar. Yeah. Um, right now it's saying if there's a token in there, um, don't do it. Um, which will probably work now because um, it's navigating to another page immediately. So kind of kind of making it work. Um, so if there is a storage item already, um, we want the logout button correct. Um, otherwise, login button did I do down here. Yeah, put that down there. Do, 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 do. Uh, otherwise, where is it? <sighs> Computers the way they are. Um, button, button, button. There we go. That's what I want it to. There. That. There. That looks better. Um, cool. Great. Home. Register. <laughs> Great login, ha, 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 ha. It should go to profile. Great, if I go to login here, just has a logout button. Um, and I would wrap the whole form in there just because don't need to put a username password to log out, but that works just great. Um, right, and you can take care of that later. Uh, and I'm not getting my multiple IDs on a page error anymore because they're all on different pages. Um, Cool. Uh, I am going to move that there just a second. Uh, I'm going to move this all the way up. Right there. Oh, God, what did I do? There. Should be because it's fragrant. Okay, dark. So yeah. Now if I'm logged in, I have to go back there. Just shows the button. Cool. I don't get the janky form message. Um. Yeah. So that should do that. Um. And again, we're not handling any errors or anything yet. That's not hard to do. We're just if we get a message that's like. Hey, you got a message that's that. Uh, handle that in a different way. Um, cool, and that's the basics of router in uh, around a half an hour. Um, questions, comments, thoughts, requests? Um, let me get... This is doo -doo -doo, uh, the best resource you're going to find here. Um, React Router Docs, React Router Docs version six. Um, they got all the juice there. So uh, their documentation is fantastic. Um, I'm not going to cover getting URL parameters right now because that's for later, I think. Um, but basically, it's pretty easy. You can grab. If you put like you know, profile three, that's uh, four. Uh, so if you want to grab that four and grab user four and show their profile, you can do that by grabbing the parameters out pretty easily. Um, that's all the documentation. And uh, I have other examples to show if you'd like to see it. Um, if that's something you want to see, let me know. Um, I can point you to some stuff if you can't figure it out from the documentation. Otherwise, um, questions? No, this has been super helpful. Thank you. And now it's all up there. Cool. Um, sweet. 
Sweet. Uh, all this code is up in the repo on the clean branch. Um, I'll post a link to that in the uh, YouTube video that will be posted to the channel and on the playlist. Um, did I miss any questions in chat? Yeah, routing one piece of the page is so much fun. Just a little, little buddy. Um, even I've seen um, like like a navigation, uh, uh, what do you call it, breadcrumbs. So if like, it was like uh, the department, food, organic, pasta or whatever, and have a little uh, in addition to having up there, you can pull it out and just like make a little breadcrumb out of the pieces of the <laughs> of the URL. Uh, it's so dumb, uh, but yeah, you can you can abuse it as much as you want. It's just JavaScript. It'll do whatever you ask it to. Um, cool. Any other questions? Uh, Mark, were you able to meet after this to go over our yeah. author? Okay, cool. Um, awesome. Well, let me uh, shut this down and I'll hook up with you in, uh, let's go to the main Zoom after this. Sounds good. Cool. Um, sweet. I'll stop the recording here uh, if I can. Stop sharing at least. Uh, awesome. Uh, yeah, everything will be where as I was and uh, I'll catch you all in a little bit. Give a holler if you need anything at all. Thank, Thank you, you, Mark.